Now, for building mobile applications in Delphi and C++ Builder, you can get to devices that are available inside of your Android or iOS smartphone or tablet. If it has one or two cameras, if you want to capture audio, capture video frames, if you want to work with sharing pictures with applications that are on your phone, for example, to Facebook or SMS or whatever, we have the components and standard actions that are built in to the release that you have. So location sensor, motion sensor, orientation sensor, the media player, the T camera component, and then a whole set of standard action classes, take photo from library action, take photo from camera action, share sheet action, a media player start, stop, and so on. These are standard actions classes that are built in that you can reuse. We have a set of sensor units and components that are available to allow you to interact with additional sensors that might be available on specific mobile devices including biometric sensors or light sensor, location sensor, motion sensor. These are classes that you can get to, and we've pre-built some components, as I mentioned, for specific sensors that are available in your smartphones. Most mobile devices include a built-in GPS antenna as well as additional subsystems to determine your location. Access this location information, all you need is a location sensor component. Go to the on location changed event handler, and in here we're past a two parameters that are location coordinates. So if you look at the new locations, latitude and longitude, you're able to determine the device's current location. In here, we're taking that latitude and longitude and displaying it to the user, and then attaching it to a URL for a Google Maps. This will display a map to the user showing their current location. You can also use this with uh, geocoding information or to track the user and find nearby attractions for them. One note is that right now we're just using a web browser to display this map to user, the tmap view. This is a much better way to display an interactive map to users. So take a look at that. This example is not using that just for simplicity's sake. Let's go and take a look at this in action. Here it is on the iPad mini. When I tap the switch up here, it activates the location sensor and we see we have our latitude and longitude and it is dropped a pin on the map right here at Embarcadero's location in Scotts Valley. Here it is on Android. Again, we'll activate the location sensor, and this time I'll put down the satellite view, and we can zoom in and see the offices here in Scotts Valley. And we have support for the Internet of Things in Rad Studio Berlin. You can get at Bluetooth Classic based devices. You can also get at Bluetooth low energy devices and work with them. We have support for beacons, both iBeacons, Alt Beacons, and the new Eddystone Beacon standard that has come out from Google. There's a beacon kind that you can choose from those three. We also have our beacon fence mapping that you can download from the Get It Package Manager. So you can set up beacon zones or beacon fence maps to build an application with multiple beacons to triangulate where you are and get locations. We also have support for Internet of Things devices, both Bluetooth LE devices and Z-Wave based devices like smart lights, smart switches, door locks, and so on. And you'll see that I've installed through Get It Package Manager, uh, the Quick Set Lock and the AOTech smart switch, as well as I've got some beacons set up and, and a beacon map so let's go into our IDE and take a look at some of the things that are available under Tools, uh, Get It Package Manager. You can click, for example, on the Internet of Things, goes out to the Package Manager server, and you can see the different kinds of devices using Bluetooth LE and our Thing Connect technology. There's blood pressure, there's digital scales. Uh, there's also support for light bulbs, uh, smart switches, and so on. You'll notice I've installed the Aeon Lab smart switch. I've installed the beacon fence. And over here, I've also installed uh, the Quickset Deadbolt Internet of Things device that I have running. I've also got a heart rate monitor, both a generic heart rate monitor, and I've got the Polar H7 heart rate monitor installed. And then those show up down here into the Internet of Things category and see that I have the, the beacon zone fencing and beacon map fencing. I've got the quick set lock, the smart switch. I've got the polar heart rate monitor, Wahoo digital scale and other devices, generic heart rate monitor. So we can drag and drop those into our applications. When you download the Internet of Things devices, you're given sample applications. Uh, it uses the AOS tech smart switch component where we're going to give it an IP address and also the device number of the 
connected device, in this case, the smart switch. And then there's other tabs that are available for looking at the status of the smart switch and also reading the different properties. So for example, when you've last connected to that device and so on. Each demo is there and available for you. Let's take a look at the demo in action. So here I've got the AOTech smart switch. We'll bring that application up. So we'll key in the IP address of the Z-Wave controller. In my case, it's a Verilite Mikasa uh, Z-Wave box. And then we'll key in the device number of the smart switch, is, which is device number four. And now it's connected to it. It tells us the current state that it's read is off. We can go get information. For example, let's read the name, smart switch energy. We can go and read what its power rating and so on. And we can turn on the smart switch and it tells us the, the smart switch is on. Uh, turn it off. You can see that when the smart switch is turned on, the desk lamp turns on. And when I hit off, it turns it off. Bring up the quick set deadbolt key in its IP address. It's connected to the same uh, Vera box and its number is device five. So we're connected to it. it. The status is it's currently unlocked. So we can go and lock it and then unlock it again. Go to the info, uh, read the device name, quick set lock. Let's look at the battery level. I've got 80% battery left. Taking a look at the beacon fence map, we've got four different beacons that define our, our department. And we define the GUIDs and the major and minor values and the location XY displacement of those beacons inside of the whole map. This is the map of the department store. We've got the, the toy zone, we've got a household goods area, and we've got a, a serial area. And then we've got some path nodes so as the customer walks around the, the department store, they can be guided to different zones or areas that they're interested in. And then on the beacon fence map, we set different properties, fencing option, uh, map options, for example, to color the beacons, to highlight where we are inside of, of the beacon fence. And then we've got the particle filter, which lets us calculate where we are inside of the beacon fence as far as location is concerned. Two of the events that we have hooked in this case, one is on zone enter and one is on zone exit. So if we enter the zone, first thing we're going to do is just see if we're in the serial zone. And if we are, we're going to use the Vera Aotech smart switch. We're going to set the switch on property to one, which will turn the light on. And then when we exit the zone, we're going to set the switch on property to zero, which will turn the light off. And now let's take a look at the demo in action using the beacon fencing and the thing point thing connect components that are part of Brad's server. Okay, the app has started and now here I am inside of our department store walking in and we're going to come near the serial. The light comes on. We've entered the zone. And then as I move back and out of the zone, the light goes off again. Let's take a quick look at that one more time. I move into the zone and the light comes on. And then as I move out of the zone, uh, the light will go back off again. So that's how easy it is to use pre-built components and samples that come out of Get It Package Manager to get started programming with the Internet of Things in the devices that you have or the beacons that you have to get yourself started doing mobile application development. The power of components and the power of sample code to get you started very fast.